Welcome back dear learners. Committee dias plays the most important role in a model UN simulation. They moderate, they guide and respond to the queries of delegates. They focus on helping the delegates give the committee a direction in discussion and most importantly, they help interpret the rules of procedures and implement these rules according to the conference goals and committee needs. Now, for the past 3 weeks we have understood in a rather elaborate manner the roles and responsibilities of the committee dais members so before moving forward let us change our approach a bit by pausing this video for 2 minutes and trying to understand this question what qualities make a committee dais member inefficient think and note down a few qualities you could have come up with the following responses rude behavior towards participants lack of awareness about the rules of procedure constantly intervening in the committee matters not giving delegates enough independence to act not guiding delegates not solving their queries dominating behavior towards the participants among others these can be a few responses you would have arrived at through your observation and these qualities are qualities that a cd member should avoid while mentoring the committee A committee dais application happens in a similar manner to a delegate application wherein it's usually the online application through the registration portals of the organization social media handles the application would include a applicant's committee agenda suggestions and a possible reasoning behind the committee agenda preferences a description of the chairing style which is their preferred way of mentoring the committee and finally a model un portfolio the cv that would contain all the previous model un experiences of the applicant from the experiences that delegate with the committee and portfolio mentioned notable awards experience in the organization as press members etc some forms also ask the applicant their preferred committee dais post between a chair or a president or a vice chair and a vice president or an aperture depending on the applicant's experience in relation to the experience for the applicants their application can be rejected if there are better applicants before them among those which are accepted large committees such as the UNGA are given more experienced committee dais members as they are better suited to handle such huge committees among the committee dais members as well those with more experience are given chair or president position and the remaining positions are given to those with less experience Many reputed conferences with highly experienced committee dais applicants conduct a second round of selection where experienced candidates are selected from the first round of applications and are interviewed for the second round. The interview is fairly simple process with a discussion that is aimed at understanding your knowledge about the United Nations model UN conferences and the general rules of procedures that the organization aims to follow. The interview is also aimed at applicants understanding of the roles and responsibility of a committee dais member and through this understanding the applicant's chairing style more elaborately thus before the interview part which is generally online the committee dais member should try and understand the organization behind the conference their past conferences their preferred rules of procedures and their goals to the conference following this the applicant should also study the rules of procedures that the conference prefers and understand different aspects of it the interview can be through an audio call or a video call and generally the senior member of the organizing committee would conduct it here it is important for the interviewee or the applicant to make sure that they show their willingness to collaborate and contribute to the conference and not just be a passive participant this shows the interviewer that one is responsible and is committed to making the conference successful it will also ensure that the interviewee understands their role not only in the committee specifically but in the general perspective of the conference as a whole a committee dais member's role is not only limited to the committee alone but through their actions in guiding the delegates and allowing them a space to learn they contribute to the reputation of the overall conference and this is something an applicant should keep in mind during the interview process and should sure understanding of and a willingness to contribute in this regard in a larger scheme of things coming to the chairing style of the committee dais members it's important to show that the applicant understands the balance between being a careless committee dais member or a dominant overindulging committee dais member and seeks to maintain a balance in the committee 
This sense of balance also varies based on the type of position an applicant is accepted in for in the committee dais, which is made up of the chairperson or president, vice chairperson or vice president, and the rapporteur. Chair generally moderates the debate through marking the delegates based on their performance and has the responsibility of interpreting the rules of procedures according to the committee demands and the committee goals. Vice chairperson or the vice president is responsible for recognizing the delegates with motions or points, counting and conducting voting and roll call sessions, replying to points and motions that are referred to the committee dais, such as point of parliamentary inquiry or order. The vice chair can also seek advice from the chairperson on any matter or query. The rapporteur is responsible for the documentation of the committee proceedings by recording the delegates' motions, points, and responses. In the case of moderated caucuses, for example, rapporteur is responsible for noting down of the topic, time, and the delegate who introduced the motion. The rapporteur also records voting stance on the delegates, mainly during the substantive voting in order to tally it with the portfolio's foreign policy or public relations policy. It is important to note that a committee dais member should maintain an equilibrium with respect to one's behaviour within the committee. A committee dais member should not constantly intervene in the committee and end up restricting the committee proceedings. A committee dais member can only put one's opinions on the direction the committee can take according to their expectations, but cannot influence the points, speeches, motions, voting or resolution in any which way. Such areas are out of bounds for the committee dais members and should be decided entirely by the delegates, although the opinion of a dais member is respected under the code of conduct. A committee dais member should not also be in any way isolated from the committee proceedings. They should constantly monitor the committee and make sure that the rules of procedures are not broken in any way. In this regard, committee dais members should also make sure that the delegates with less knowledge or experience are not bullied or disrespected in any way, both during the formal and informal sessions, and see that all the delegates get a fair opportunity to speak and express their views on the agenda. The committee dais should also focus on making the committee highly inclusive, fair and transparent while ensuring that there is at least some amount of learning that occurs for every participant and see to it that every participant has something to take back from the conference. Another important responsibility of the committee dais members comes right after the committee session ends, that is, the role of the feedback and marking lists. Having been made up of highly experienced model UN participant, a committee dais is expected to accurately assess and judge delegates' performance in the committee and provide feedback to the delegates. This generally is an overall committee feedback, but if the delegate wishes for an individual feedback on their performance, the committee dais can be open to the delegates approaching them privately for this. It is also important for the rapporteur and the chairperson to coordinate their marking of the delegates and present it to the committee up to the award ceremony in order to keep the process transparent and allow the delegates to understand their performance, mistakes and areas of strength for their future conferences. These markings of the individual delegates' performances are generally organized and are presented to the delegates in the form of an Excel sheet. The committee dais members should also consider forming a strong network with these delegates and allow them to come up with queries and doubts in relation to model UN conferences in their future endeavors. In our next video, we will try to understand the role of international press in a model UN conference and try to understand various roles and responsibilities an international press member has to play in a model UN conference. Thank you.